Well, I'm certain that all of you recognized that as the um, the tune that is often called the Ode to Joy. And today we are indeed talking about joy. It is the second fruit of the Spirit in the list, and so that is what our discussion topic is for today. But let us come together with our call to worship. God's Spirit gathers us. We are not alone. Oh, sorry, one moment. Here we go. God's Spirit gathers us. We are not alone. God's Spirit calls us. We are to discern together God's will. God's Spirit sends us. We are to shine like the sun, bearing witness to Christ, our Savior. Joy is such an interesting topic, and it covers such a vast array of different experiences. But despite joy... Or maybe because of joy, confession is important. And if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Sin is our stumbling block before God. Repentance clears our path to hear and receive God's truth. So let us confess our sins together. Master Gardener, weeds and wheat fill the fields of our lives, grow entangled and are difficult to distinguish. We have not spent the time we should in prayer and study of your word to help us discern what is evil and against your will. We excuse our complacency and justify our passive faith, yet we need your truth. We hunger for your harvest. Jesus, forgive us. Deliver us from evil. Clear our path to you. Amen. It is true that through Christ's death and resurrection, we are a new creation, ready to shine like the sun in the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. A prayer for illumination this day. Illumine us, O God. Bless us with ears to hear your truth vision to discern your path, and feet ready to move into action, responding to your call. Guide us and inspire us in this moment of proclamation. Amen. Our scripture today is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Be glad in the Lord always. Again, I say be glad. Let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions, along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. From now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent and if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things, all that is true, all that is holy, and all that is just, all that is pure, and all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. Practice these things. Whatever you learned, received, heard, or saw in us, the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I did last time, I will, of course, bring up a series of questions, fewer questions this time, and I'll show them on the screen. Here they are right now. You can pause the screen and write down these questions. Spend a couple of moments thinking about your own reflections on these questions. And then throughout this little um, monologue, really, whenever I bring up another question, I'll try to remember to show this screen, pause it, and revisit some of your reflections. Well, first of all, though, before I get to any of those discussions, let me tell you something that has brought me joy this week. You see, you may be able to tell by the shirt that I'm wearing that, well, this is camp week. 
in Schoharie Valley Community Camp. And it's this year we've had um, a wonderful, wonderful crew of young people from as little as I think four years old um, through, I think that the oldest camper I want to say is about 13. And then we have junior counselors and counselors and adults and so many people just swarming over these three church campuses for the week watching the kids interact with each other, watching how the counselors help out their, uh, their kiddos. It's been really joyful to see. There have been some sad moments. We've had a couple of kiddos whose lives have been going through some difficult things, and yet watching them both acknowledge the sadness, but then also finding joy in this week has been an absolute treat. So this brings up my first question. What brings you feelings of joy? What about your faith? Is it a somber reflection or a joyful outpouring? Several years ago, I was helping a friend out with um, with her math master's thesis, I spend many hours reading through her work, and at the end of it, she gave me a gift. It was a book, um, as one does. And the title of this book is Between Heaven and Mirth. And it talks about why the spiritual life is one of joy, one of, of all of this levity, there's humor. There's so much going on in the act of spiritual life. And yet so often we can, we have in our heads this idea of the somber savior, the judging God, no joy in faith life. In fact, the author reflects on a friend of his who, a um, Jesuit priest, well, in training, he made a confession one day to one of the other monks that during a worship service he had engaged in excessive levity. And this other monk said, My son, all levity is excessive. Well, how do we reconcile that with wisdom? Who says, I was with God at the moment of creation. I danced in the newness of the world, and God delighted in me. God takes delight. If God takes delight, why must we be somber and sober? Our scripture reading itself, be glad in the Lord always. Again, I say be glad. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Be joyful in the Lord. Our spiritual life should reflect that joy. Well, does being joyful mean that you must be happy all the time? Or that you must be always telling jokes like a comedian? No, you don't have to be happy all the time. Because without that knowledge of sorrow, of suffering, what is happiness? What is joy? We fully experience both of these things. We are human, after all. If we never experience sadness, are we fully human? Of course, when it comes to jokes, one of the funniest things that happened, because I do tell jokes, I find humor in some of the silliest things. With day camp, we always start every day with a little skit about the lesson plans, about some ongoing saga of characters. And, well, after one of our skits, 
one of the little boys in camp, I was asking for reflections on what did they hear in those skits, and one of those little boys eagerly raises his hand. And I came up to him and said, what did you hear in the script? You tell really corny jokes. <laughs> I just, that cracked me up. And then he said, oh, that's a good thing, by the way. <laughs> Which just had me laughing even harder. I thought that it was wonderful. And then several of us, um, after, um, after another uh, teaching time, a discovery time, as we call it for camp, several of us were sitting on one of the picnic tables, just taking a little breather and swapping very corny faith-based jokes. Taking delight in these things is a lot of fun. but it is also tempered by this knowledge of suffering. We can find humor in all of these things, but we are not ignoring the suffering of the world. Sometimes you need that little bit of levity in order to help process what is going on in the world. It's that breath of God that comes in and says, it's okay, you've got this. But that begs the question, how can you find a sense of joy when you are unhappy or your living and work environments are without joy? There's nothing to take delight in. What can we do? There's several things, actually. One is Hopefully, it's only one part of your life that is this joyless environment. So take delight in all of those other areas where there is joy. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you are having a hard time with joy, find someone to talk with, to tell them what's going on. Why is this place so joyless? Talk it out. Get, get your frustrations expressed with a safe person. And they might help you see things from a different light so you can find joy again. But here's another thing. Sometimes we must, like that leaven, that little bit of leaven that goes into the flour and leavens the entire batch, that little piece of the kingdom of God, sometimes we are meant to be the joy. What can you do to seed joy? And sometimes it's just not going to work, which is why we have those other strategies of finding joy. So you don't need to be happy all the time. You don't need to make jokes constantly. You can just appreciate what the world is. Not everyone is meant to be a comedian. Comedians need people to appreciate them. And not everything is a joke. Sometimes that delight isn't in anything overtly funny. It's, oh, what a nice breeze on a still day. I delight in that. There are so many elements of joy, and I could go on forever, but I think that the children are coming back from a field trip soon, so I need to cut this video short, unfortunately. But I ask you, where is your joy? At the end of last week's worship service, I asked folks to do some homework of saying, how do love and joy influence each other or have effect on each other? What is the relationship between love and joy? So I invite you all to remember that homework, to write it down and to reflect on how do joy and love inform each other?
Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before the opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Mortals, join the happy chorus which the morning stars began. Love divine is reigning o'er us, joining all in heaven's plan. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. And now remember this. God's Spirit sends us. We are to shine like the sun, bearing witness to Christ our Savior. May the nourishment of God's word, the bond of Christian community, and the guidance of God's Holy Spirit fortify us for faithful lives of discipleship. Amen.